as an actor, I love like getting kidnapped, tortured. I know the fans hate it. <laughs> I knew going into season two, um, more than anything, because there were so many things that were up in the air, I knew for a fact leaving season one into season two, Alice was going to have a love story this season. That was my number one goal. And obviously she's so charismatic and she has chemistry with anyone she's acting with. But we wanted to um, reveal that there was love at some point and kind of make that her new Achilles heel for the season of can I fall in love again or am I good enough to be loved? Um, what is that? Does that make me vulnerable? All of those um, questions that a, the series villain would, might be asking herself if she dares, you know, have feelings about it. Mr. Hilsinger. What? What? What's happening? Aaron, it's me. It's Dr. Rogers. Uh, t tell me you got it. Tell me you got a fix, Doc. Not at the moment, I'm afraid. Aaron, you're okay. You just, you just had an episode. I can't keep having my. Well, that's why I'm here. There is a cure for you and for dozens of other patients that are cooped up in here. And Aaron, you're gonna help me get it. By the time this episode comes along, the kryptonite, it's get, it's gotten really bad. And it's gotten to a point that she cannot hide it anymore. It's gotten to a point that it's infected. The veins are super green and nasty. It's affecting her energy. It's affecting her breathing. When we're actually doing the fight scenes, I have to be aware all the time of this, you know, of this injury, of the, the effect that this injury has. You'll see me grab for it at times. You'll see me have to take a break, which is when, you know, usually our villain is able to kind of like, you know, uh, uh, get his, get his, um, when our villain's able to get his upper hand in the fight. I just need your help getting his new location from her. Sure. I'll just casually text her and ask. You don't have to ask her anything. Once this is within range of her cell, It'll install an invisible high-frequency generator receiver app. Essentially turns her cell into a digital and audio microphone. I just need you to get it close enough to transfer. You can't be serious right now. As serious as your girl doing 8 to 10 at Blackgate. Okay, first of all, technology like this should not exist in a free society. Second, screw you. I'm not betraying my girlfriend. In, in episode four, we finally got to see the beginning of their relationship and why Ryan fights for Angelique the way she does. Because Angelique saved her. She saved her from the candy lady. But not only that, she saved her because Ryan had no one. That was, they were originally best friends and then they fell in love with each other. That's a soulmate type of situation where I'm always gonna root for it if it's healthy for you. And I think right now in their specific positions and their current positions in life, it's not healthy for Ryan, but I also think that there's something to save in Angelique. And that's Ryan's that that that's Ryan's job. At least she feels that way. She feels like it is my job to save her, like mama saving me. And I will do whatever it takes to save her. And in that, in that case, I don't know if I can even have a real judgment towards it. I think that that's a soul, that's a soulmate partnership that I I feel like has to just have its moment and evolve the way it's supposed to evolve. This is the same Angelique who let you take the fall for her, right? Who continues to sell even after you serve time for being caught with her drugs on you? Do the right thing here, Ryan. I'll get you the information you want. And then this file right here, it disappears. Is that clear? I do this. You can't touch her. You can't protect her forever. No, but I can protect her from you. Is that clear? Crystal. As an actor, I love like getting kidnapped, tortured. I know the fans hate it. <laughs> They're going to totally be like, protect Mary, what are you doing? But it's sort of 
deliciously my favorite parts of playing Mary, just because she is the heart. She's sort of often the comedic relief of this show to watch her in distress and to see her, how intelligent she is, figure it out, be on her toes. And then also the sort of psychological exploration of amygdala and just the little boy inside. And that's really what Mary connects to. And to find all of this out about her mother's past that she didn't know about, I think is a little bit haunting. So yeah, Mary's gonna definitely have to make some choices of her own. They said it's somewhere in this underground lab. So where is it? She doesn't know anything about Actually, it either. Actually, I know literally everything about it. There's none left. No! I can't kill her, I need her. I think if you've been following on through Batwoman, you know that the clinic is the most integral part of Mary Hamilton's identity. In her last moments with her mother, I think it allows her to say goodbye and for her mom to finally let go when she says, I've known about the clinic the whole time and I'm so proud of you. So knowing that, to have Jacob, her father, take away the one identifying factor, the one thing that Mary says is her sense of purpose is the maybe the most devastating blow of all. The, the reasons that he gives in episode six about shutting down Mary's clinic is is honest and accurate, you know, for reasons of morality, for reasons of legality. But I don't think, the other reason I think is he just doesn't want to put her in harm's way. When you operate within that world of darkness and of, you know, nefariousness and, and you're part of a, a, of a volatile and dangerous world, the chances are that you're gonna get hurt. And, and I think he wants to protect her. So he shuts it down as a means to, um, for her safety and for his emotional well-being as well, because he doesn't want to put her in harm's way. I know you're pissed about the clinic. I'm shutting it down, Mary. Why? Why would you do that? It's illegal. Yeah, but a lot of people in Gotham can't afford health care in the legal way. Practicing without a license, impersonating a doctor, possession of narcotics, need I go on? I've saved hundreds, maybe thousands of lives. And even more than that, I make people feel like they're worthy of being alive. I like that she kind of has that moment with him where she can just say like, I get what you had to do, but I also did what I had to do. And I've moved on from it, but just throwing it out there, you weren't like the best dad to me. And that's okay, but here we are. Now I have this clinic. And my hope is that we lead the audience down this path of he's gonna, you know, hug her and say, I accept you and I'm so proud of you. But he's Jacob Kane at the end of the day, and he's not going to do that. He is, when he wants to protect something, he holds it, squeezes it so tight that he suffocates it. You know, when she kind of throws that emotional bombshell at him, I think he's affected because he never really thought about it like that. He never thought that he was neglecting her. And for him, she was always his daughter, but you know, he's got time to reflect now. And maybe I didn't do enough. Maybe I didn't say enough. Maybe I didn't understand the emotional trauma once she went through when she lost her mother, my ex-wife. Um, so I think there's, you know, Jacob's kind of getting it from all sides in season two. Uh, and so he's got a lot to deal with emotionally. And it just shows how little, in her mind, how little he knows her. And so this is gonna create a, a fracture in their life, uh, in their relationship that ultimately will be um, pretty detrimental to Jacob as he's trying to cope with news he gets about Kate and um, Alice continuing to be a problem. And um, it's going to affect him very, very personally. I'll protect her, I promise you. Now go! <laughs> Okay. So 
date him in the car. We don't need any incidents. Who are you? Just a man looking for a map. Don't give it to him. It's very layered because I think that Sophie is at a transition in her life where she's seeing things around her and she's questioning what, you know, her own, her own choices. She's questioning her own loyalty um, to, uh, to an, or an organization that she's wanted to be a part of her entire life. And it really does kind of mirror a lot of what's going on in the world in general, you know? And it's making people take a step away from looking at the organization to looking at themselves individually. And then also as two black women, just watching their journeys together. Because yeah, we're black actresses, but we're also black characters in Gotham. So there's this connection that happens where it's like, I wanna see you in, but this choice that you're making, I don't, I don't agree with. I will shoot this crow in the head. Her blood will be on your hands, Batwoman. Is that really how you wanna start your legacy? We need that map. I know. But I also can't let you die. We see her reacting differently at the end of this episode than she ever has before. And I think she grows up after episode six. And that's how impactful, important, and sort of shaken she is after her encounter with Amygdala. She has to look out for herself now. You know, sometimes the bat team isn't there. Sometimes her own father, her own family isn't there. Her mother certainly isn't there anymore. And when she looks around, she, she has to look out for herself and what's going to be the best for her. After fighting a villain, they come together and start to realize, okay, look, we know that we're looking for Kate, but Ryan is in trouble and we need to figure out how we can save her while still obviously looking for Kate. What do you mean she's dying? I looked at the wound, the meds were working. Why didn't you tell me? She asked me not to. But with the bat team. Not to her. Ryan has a huge medical secret that she is going to need all, all the help she can get. And certainly Mary is the most qualified person she has for the better, for the worse, you know? So without the clinic, Mary is working at such a disadvantage here in not only her contributions to the bat team, but in hopes of saving Ryan's life. They have to start to depend on each other. I mean, at the end of the day, they, there's genuine love amongst the team. And whether or not Ryan is bad woman, they don't they don't want to see her die, you know. And so you really watch them all go on this beautiful group journey to not only save Ryan but to also continue to find Kate. So while Luke and Mary are kind of trying to figure out how do we solve this thing that really can't be solved, Ryan's like, "You guys figure that out. I'm gonna go do my thing." And if, you know, if today's the last day on earth, at least I can die knowing I went down trying. And so it's a pretty dark episode for Ryan as she has to come to terms with the fact that um, this could be one of her last days on earth. 